Next, we're going to talk about the solutions for these these pipe problems. So th th there's a couple, uh, two categories, the short-term solutions and long-terms. Uh, certainly from a short-term solution aspect, there's, there's the, the ever-popular do-nothing, uh, which, is, which is definitely uh, very much a short-term solution. Um, as you can see in the pictures in the top right, uh, a little tough to see, but that's actually a facility we saw down in Georgia that actually permanently installed a bucket into the ceiling to catch the water dripping out of the leak. And, and because maintenance guys are always looking for convenience, he actually epoxied a spigot into the side of the bucket so that every week he could go and, and drain the water out of the bucket. Um, while this is certainly a short-term solution and, and made his life a little easier on the, on the short run, uh, and the problem's not going to go away. It's only going to get worse. And, and, and so typically after the, the, the bucket-style solution, uh, you go into the spot repairs where you're actually putting pipe clamps onto the pipe. The, the picture of the pipe in the bottom left-hand corner is a piece of pipe that we actually removed from a building that through the whole length of the pipe uh, probably had 50 or 60 uh, rubber clamps around it to try to seal up all the pin holdings. Uh, again, once the problem reaches a system, systemic problem and is not just an isolated incident, uh, it's only going to get worse. And, and, and then what happens when you, you ignore it for too long is you get an issue, you see in the bottom right hand, where you get mold and decay of the, the building material, et cetera. So the long-term solutions, which uh, the bulk of this presentation are going to be centered around, uh, there's essentially two. One is to repipe the building, and that's removing all the existing piping in the building and replacing it with all new piping, uh, or using something called epoxy pipelining, which is installing an epoxy lining into the existing piping system. So there's a couple different options for repiping uh, in, in repipe materials. And the first one, which everybody probably knows about, is repiping it with copper. Copper is certainly the most commonly used plumbing material uh, in the market today. It's been very widely used for the past uh, 30, 40 years. can be used both on, on hot and cold water lines. Uh, one issue to be aware of is that copper comes in different grades. Uh, there's something called L, M, and K grades of copper pipe, and what that refers to is the wall thickness. And, and the, the thinner the pipe wall, the obviously less expensive it is, uh, but also the less durable it is. So something to, to definitely keep in, keep in mind. The, the other issue is uh, that the conditions that caused that copper pipe to fail in the first place most likely are still there. And, and so it's something that has to really be looked at and addressed, um, or else you can running the same problem. Uh, CuraFlow is started as a repipe company, and we were having uh, buildings that we had repiped having to be repiped again in 15 years. Uh, and that's because the water conditions that caused that copper to degrade still existed. And, and so that's when you have to start looking at, at, at different options. Uh, the, the next couple options... Uh, involved using plastic pipe. Uh, PEX is probably the, the most commonly used right now. Uh, the issue with PEX is it's only available up in the two inches in diameter. So for risers and mains in a, a large building, uh, you still have to use a metallic pipe for those, uh, for those mains. But it can be used for both hot and cold. Uh, it's very flexible, which makes it easy to install and route into the building, but it also necessitates the need for more support, whereas copper can run for long distances with a minimal amount of support and be very stable. Uh, because PEX is so flexible, uh, there has to be a lot of uh, supports uh, added throughout the, the system. Uh, the next product you see down below is a, is a newer product called Aquatherm. And Aquatherm is a, a PVC ABS plastic composite um, that's actually fusion bonded, whereas is PEX uses mechanical fasteners uh, to join the various pieces together. Uh, Aquatherm actually has a machine that uses heat and actually melts the fittings together. It's a pretty neat product. Uh, as I said, it's, it's relatively new to the market. Uh, still a bit on the expensive side, but extremely uh, durable product. And, and the third one for plastic is CPVC. And CPVC 
was very popular in the 80s and 90s, certainly less common uh, in today's new construction. Uh, CPVC, it's light, it's relatively easy, uh, easy to install, it's just uh, glued or solvent bonded. Uh, it's inexpensive. Uh, the biggest issue with CPVC is it can become brittle. Uh, and if it becomes brittle over time, it tends to crack, and you get leaks from those cracks, obviously. And it's a very difficult thing to repair. You, 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 so it, it, it's something, as I said, because of the brittleness factor, uh, has become much less of, a, a, of an attractive option over the years. And then the, the, the next option is the epoxy pipelining. Uh, and epoxy pipelining is, is a, a, a bit more of an unknown or newer technology, although it's been around for 40-some years. And it involves uh, installing an epoxy lining into an existing pipe system. And, and this does two things. One is it's going to seal up any, any small pinhole leaks uh, in the system. But the, 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 the biggest issue is it is going to prevent water from interacting with the metallic pipe wall. So any corrosion that was happening is now going to stop because the epoxy is going to pr uh, provide that seamless barrier. Uh, it's going to has a design life of 40 to 60 years, so it greatly increases the lifespan of an existing system. can be used in a commercial hot. And it's a product that goes in liquid but cures in, in 5 to 24 hours, depending on what style of epoxy is, is used. The, the epoxy lining is a, a three-step process where you're using specialized equipment to go in and dry the existing piping system. Uh, you are then cleaning that pipe of any debris and corrosion so you have a smooth, uh, clean metal surface for the epoxy to bond to. And then you're actually using compressed air to blow the epoxy into the pipe and uh, create a, a safe, durable uh, coating or lining inside the pipe. And how all this is done, those three steps, the, the, the drawing, the cleaning, and the, the actual injection of epoxy, is, is done using hoses connected to the existing fixtures. So uh, sinks, toilets, uh, washers, et cetera, are all going to have shut-off valves. We are actually removing those shut-off valves, putting on a threaded connection, and installing our uh, our hoses to the to the various fixtures, and essentially going fixture by fixture, suite by suite through a whole building, and and aligning the uh, the plumbing system in, in the entire building. <laughs> 